What's up YouTube? Uh, this is Shravens and welcome to Immigrant Stories episode 3 Getting Robbed. Uh, before I jump into the story I want to break down the gameplay for you and apologize in advance since my team did lose this game but I personally played pretty well. Uh, this is a gameplay I got a few days ago on the map Carbon and it is of uh, Kill Confirmed a game type. I normally don't pay, play as much and I use the uh, gold MP7 in this gameplay which I believe is my fifth gold gun of the MW3 series. Now uh, when I entered the lobby of this game there were three players I would consider pretty good and they all played Kill Confirmed a lot based on their record and uh, all three of them uh, unfortunately for me ended up on the opposing team now don't get me wrong we still hung in there and gave them a run for their money and we only lost the plot towards the end of the game so this was still a good gameplay now this story goes back to summer of 2004 in oklahoma and i now had been living for close to two years in the us of a and i was more or less settled in the country uh, i was doing well academically and i was working hard and saving a little money and if you're wondering uh, i still did not have too much of a social life at this point i was uh, only concentrating on keeping my grades up and preserving my scholarship and at the same time saving as much money as i could uh, now, after trying many odd jobs like working at the grocery store, making donuts, selling uh, cell phones at the mall, you know, working at the uh, motel uh, front desk, I finally found a job which I enjoyed doing and that was delivering pizzas. I really liked uh, driving and uh, I still do. It sort of calms me down, it helps me relax and pizza delivery was something that suited my persona at that point. Uh, now I was working for this little uh, hole in the wall joint called uh, Pizza Land and our clientele uh, by the way wasn't the best quality so I relied more on commission based on how many orders I delivered rather than tips like uh, most pizza delivery guys normally do. Uh, I think I averaged around most days anywhere between 8 to 11 dollars an hour and I worked about 35 hours a week delivering Pizza Land's products uh, and I also did about uh, 8 to 10 hours a week at my university library so I worked overall about 40-45 hours a week uh, while going to university as a full-time graduate student. I used to joke that I actually may get a PhD after I graduate which was an inside joke and acronym for Pizza House Delivery. Pizza Land now uh, had mostly immigrants working for them and uh, one of them was this Nigerian cook uh, who had this habit of using the word uh, baby after almost every sentence regardless of uh, who he was speaking to and he wasn't gender biased either. Uh, he would say shit to us like, Are you gonna get that phone baby? Watch out, this pizza is hot just like me baby. Later baby. And uh, can I smack that ass baby? <laughs> I'm only kidding guys about the last one. Uh, he, he was just uh, ridiculous about using that term but he worked really hard uh, just like the rest of us and overall he was a cool guy. Uh, now the setup is that it's a Friday night and we were understaffed as usual and uh, only had two drivers because the uh, third one called in sick which unfortunately happened a lot at that place. I don't really know why but people called in sick quite a bit. Uh, in fact, uh, we were so understaffed that myself and the Nigerian cook, we would uh, take the for delivery phone orders ourselves and the other two people working there uh, really could not help us out because they did not speak English at a level where the customers could understand them. Uh, there was one such order which came in and our cook took the order and it was a big one about 63 64 dollars uh, if I recollect correctly um, and the uh, customer I remember had asked us to bring change as they would uh, have a hundred dollar note now me personally uh, I was rubbing my hands because uh, it was my turn to deliver and uh, even if I did not get a decent trip uh, the commission would more than make up for it uh, because it was a you know a high dollar amount order so I uh, helped make the order myself quickly and uh, set off on my way to give myself a chance to get a decent tip now uh, when I got there it looked like uh, an apartment complex which was not very well maintained and there's hardly any lighting around it was dark and the order came in from a building that was not 
facing a road. Uh, by, by this, what I mean is it was deep inside the complex. So there was not much street lighting or, or the likes. So that started to make me nervous. Uh, you know, I did not want to venture in. So I stood about 50 feet away uh, or so from the building and uh, began to call the customer, you know, listed uh, on the order receipt. I began to call his number. Well, no one was picking up the call and uh, the customer, strangely enough, didn't have a voicemail and now that began to alarm me a little bit more. So I decided, you know, it may not be safe to deliver the order because, you know, I had this gut feeling inside that something was up. And just as I was about to turn around, I heard a voice. It said, uh, you know, it was a young kid's voice that said, hey, delivery guy, come here. I got the cheese. Uh, and now uh, my first instinct was, did he order a pizza with no cheese in it and he was going to put it on himself? I know it's a little silly, but I was like not up on the street lingo back then. Uh, but I kind of understood that he meant that he had the money, but that wasn't my first instant reaction, if you know what I mean. But what I did know instantly, that it was a trap. So I requested that he come out to the street light where we could do the transaction there and I was about to turn around when I felt something in my back. Now I'm not sure if it was a gun uh, but I definitely uh, didn't want to take a risk. So a voice just told me to put the order on the ground and don't make a sound or I will shoot you. So I just did what he said. I put the order on the ground and now a third person uh, began to come in from the side and check my pockets and they took whatever they could find. I believe I had about $35 cash on me at that point. And uh, the cheese person in the meanwhile came over and took the order and uh, you know the guy behind me asked me again if uh, that was all I had and, uh, and I told him uh, that was all I had and he threatened to kill me this time uh, and I and I told him I swear I have nothing and uh, you know I don't we don't really carry much money on us at this point I was shaking and but I did I was doing my best to remain calm I thought I was going to die for sure guys however luckily for me uh, they must uh, realize that I was not lying so he told me to stay put for a minute and then he left and uh, he told me that they were watching me and not to do anything stupid or make a wrong move. So I waited and left and narrated what happened to the owners. The cops came and filed a report, but I couldn't see any of them clearly. Uh, and so I could not provide them with an accurate description. All I could tell is that they sounded very young and were between five feet seven and five feet ten tall. I have never forgotten that, forgotten that day, guys. It really changed the way I delivered after that. And I did not go back to deliver. I did go back to delivering pizzas, but I would check and double check orders and locations. And needless to say, uh, we flagged that apartment complex and Pizza Land uh, never delivered there again. Well, hope you enjoyed this uh, new story from my life, guys. It was something a little different from the previous two episodes, but it was an important event in my life nonetheless. Take care and I'll see you soon.